Now that you're a little more familiar with working with vector shapes and the pen tool, it's time that you learn how to create a compound shape. Here is an example of a compound shape that I've made with four triangles. Just a red triangle and three white triangles. Sounds easy enough, but it's a little more complicated than it looks, and I'm going to walk you through how to make this compound shape, and I'd like you to follow along. So to make this compound shape, we start by creating a red triangle. The red triangle is created by selecting the polygon tool from the toolbar and choosing three sides. If three sides is not already set, please select and type three. You can also select the color of red that you'd like to use. I constrained it to web colors in this case. Um, you don't have to. So bringing up the color picker from the tool options panel here is just click, select a color, click OK, and then you just drag, click and drag on the picture window and create a triangle. So I've got this red triangle and I've actually used the move tool and the transform to spin it into place so that the bottom part of the triangle actually sits flat against whatever would be the floor, quote unquote. So if I have this red triangle here and it's not quite right, I can use the move tool. I can bring up command or control T to use the transform and I can spin the triangle into place like so and when I'm pretty happy with it I just hit return and there I have my shape. So I'm going to actually move back just a couple steps and then we have your red triangle. The next step is that I'd like to create a white triangle. And I'd like to create a white triangle that fits a nice one-third space in between these, in, you know, inside the red triangle and then the top of the triangle would hit what might be sort of the center point of the red triangle. And it's important to note that when you're creating these triangles if you hold down the shift key you can strain it to an equilateral shape. So I'm holding down the shift key to constrain that to an equilateral triangle. So I create a white triangle in a separate layer. So I create a new layer and I use the I use the compound I'm sorry the polygon tool, select a color. In this case I'm going to choose white click OK and since I'm on a separate layer, layer I'm going to go ahead and draw right on top of this red triangle and I'm holding down the shift key and I'm creating my white triangle. I can use the move tool to move it into place and I can use the transform tool to spin it around and click and drag into place and I can kind of see whether or not it's about the right size as I'm spinning and moving this triangle. And I can then further edit the triangle, hit return when I'm somewhat happy with it, by using my direct selection tool. The direct selection tool I can actually click and move the individual points of the triangle like so. And once I'm fairly happy with this white triangle, then I want to make two more. If I use my path selection tool, I can actually copy under edit copy or command C or control C and I can then paste that path. Now even though you don't see it, you can use the move tool or the direct selection, I'm sorry, the path selection tool to move that path and you can see that there is actually a second path that was created. So when you're copying and pasting, Photoshop by default pastes in place. So you might not actually be able to see where that path goes.
And I'm going to repeat that action one more time. So I can, again, I've already copied it, so all I have to do is Command V or Edit Paste. And using my Path Selection tool, I can then drag it into place. Now looking at these triangles, they're just a tiny bit small, and they're not exactly hitting the edges of the red triangle, as I can see. As you can see also, these um, by looking at the mask, the vector mask that is created by copying and pasting the triangle shapes, you can see that I have three paths in here and you can also see using my selection tool I can select those paths. But if I want to edit the points individually then I can use my direct selection tool and now I can click and drag those points separately until I kind of have a better idea of, let's see, it looks like this path needs to move up just a tad, maybe just one pixel, using direct selection tool. And I keep clicking, and I can use the arrow keys on my keyboard to make very subtle adjustments. And this one, click on the top and select that top point. And I'm moving to make subtle adjustments by clicking on a specific point and using the arrow keys on my keyboard to make subtle adjustments. Once I'm fairly happy with the placement of the three triangles, I need to select those paths again. Using my path selection tool, I'm going to hold the shift key down and select each one of them. Click, click, click. Notice how you can see the points of those paths that lets me know that they're selected. I'm going to copy these paths, edit, copy, hide this layer, go to my red triangle layer, make it active, and I'm going to paste, edit, paste, or command V. Now those paths have been placed in here but they are not, we do not have the red triangle shape active. So notice how these compound shape elements are not available to me. In order to have these compound paths available to me, I must first select the path of the red triangle. And as you can see, it is not selected. So let's go back up one step. Command Z or use your history panel to back up one step. Let's reselect using the direct selection tool. Reselect, holding the shift key down, each of the three white triangle paths. Edit copy or command or control C on the keyboard choose the red triangle layer, turn the triangles layer off so you can no longer see them. Now I have to actually select the path of the red triangle. So I select that path by clicking once and now I go edit, paste, and you can see that those compound path selections in my toolbar are available to me. So there's a subtle difference there and it's very important to have a path selected that you want to merge with the new paths that you're pasting in. I'm going to subtract those triangle paths from the red triangle. Boom! I have made my compound shape. And what's even better is that these points are still editable. If I use the direct selection tool, even though it's a compound path, I can still edit my points and further adjust until I'm, I'm happier with the way this turns out. And if I click off of that 
layer and choose the background layer, for example, I can see subtleties, little areas where the red triangle is poking through. That means that I just have another opportunity to go back in, choose those paths, and edit them. Select the path, direct selection tool, allows me to click on an individual point and edit it. These needed to be moved down. Looked like this one needed to move to the left slightly. I can click my background layer to make it active and I can see that those paths are working a little bit better. So it may not work out the first time perfectly but don't panic because you do have the ability to use the direct selection tool to edit those paths within the compound shape. And this concludes your introduction to creating compound shapes.